Unless you've been living under a rock, or are rich enough that you never cook at home, you've probably heard of the Instant Pot craze. What is the Instant Pot? It's a pressure cooker with all the bells and whistles. Toss some tough meat, carrots, potatoes, whatever, and after about an hour, you have a yummy stew that didn't take too long to make. According to some, during the dark days of the COVID lockdowns, many a bachelor was saved from starvation by this tool that allowed people who barely knew how to boil water to make food at home. But the Instant Pot and the other pressure cookers we can buy at the market have both a noble ancestry and a connection with the modern steam engine. Yep, your Instant Pot goes to the same family reunions as the steam locomotive. Now before we get into the nitty gritty of why we're talking about cooking in trains, a little rundown on how the pressure cooker works and why it's so useful. Everybody knows water boils, and in boiling, put certain limits on how hot you can cook something. Try to heat it up, the water boils away, keeping the temperature at the boiling point until it's all gone, at which point your food turns to charcoal. Pressure cookers solve this problem very simply. The higher the pressure, the higher the temperature before your water boils. The normal sea level boiling points of water is about 212 Fahrenheit, but if you have a pressure cooker where the pressure is at say 30 PSI, that's pounds per square inch, then the boiling point of water goes up to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. The hotter temperature cooks the food faster, giving a deeper cooking, while the fact that the water isn't boiling and vanishing into the air as steam means your food remains covered with water and will not emulate a charcoal briquette. So where did the pressure cooker come from? Well, it came from something called a digester. The first person to come up with this was a French physicist, Denis Papin, who came up with the steam digester in 1679, around 344 years ago. Denis was a refugee from France where the revocation of the Edict of Nantes in 1685 made life a little uncomfortable if you were a French Huguenot in a Catholic nation. I'll talk about that more later, but let's just understand. Religious liberty was not on the radar of most European states during this period. So Denise left, first for Germany, and then London. That was Germany and Britain's gain, France's loss. Now, he didn't just think of a digester as something to save bachelors from starvation. No, he was also looking into ways to make bones easily crushable and get the fat out of them so they could be ground into bone meal. This was important because bone meal could be used as a dietary supplement for animals, fertilizer, and even a human dietary supplement. And his design was successful, not just for this, but for a variety of other meals. And Papin served it to his fellow scientists, and they were quite happy at how everything tasted, and how soft everything was rendered. Generations of people who can't chew tough, tough steak may now raise a cheer to his memory. But the digester as first design had a few problems, starting with the science of metallurgy was pretty basic at this time. Remember the part about increasing the pressure? Well, if you increase the pressure too much, you get a scientific phenomena known as a big boom. Even if the pressure vessel is built right, without gauges, it was entirely too easy to hit the boom threshold. And while many people enjoy excitement at the dinner table, explosions are a little too exciting. But Dennis Papin had an idea to solve this. If the problem was too much pressure, then you needed something to relieve the pressure, without just letting the container lose all of its pressure, which would defeat the purpose of a steam cooker. And so he invented the safety valve in 1681. Now, as you can see from the picture, it's not like a modern safety valve, although the principles are the same. It's a long arm with weights attached to hold it down. When the air in the container hits the right pressure, the gauge is pushed up allowing the air in the chamber to stay at a safe pressure while maintaining the temperature. Now, this was a big deal for two reasons. First of all, it was a safety measure that would allow generations of individuals to use everything from steam boilers to pressure cookers with some certainty that they would not explode. That's pretty important. But equally importantly, it put Papin on the track of asking, what could you do with the power the steam can exert? And if it's strong enough to push a valve up, it certainly could be used for some other things, like to convert that pressure into mechanical force. In other words, using steam power for industrial uses. And in 1690, he designs the first recorded single cylinder steam engine and published the design. Now, it's not nearly as effective as later designs. The water would stay in the cylinder, so it would push the piston up when it boiled, 
and then it would come back down as the water condensed, and that made for an extremely slow engine. His later steam engine design was more conventional, with the steam being fed into the cylinder and then exhausted using the pressure relief valves he invented to keep things safe. Unfortunately, the technology needed to fit pistons into the cylinders tightly wouldn't be developed until later, when Thomas Newcomen built his own steam engine in 1712. Now, there's some question as to how much Newcomen got from Pepin, since several of Pepin's papers have been submitted to the Royal Society in London, and Newcomen's design is very similar to Pepin's design, although he added a number of improvements that made the engine practical for general use. We do know that the Royal Society didn't pay Pepin or otherwise acknowledge his contributions, and he was pretty unhappy about that. Ultimately, Denis Pepin died in poverty, and we don't know for certain when he died or where he was buried, although one record claims that a Denis Pepin was buried at St. Bride's in London in 1712. Ultimately, this is one of the examples of how technological progress can come from quite unusual sources. Pepin didn't start out thinking about making a steam engine. He wanted to make a bone digester, and he did. But the challenges he faced, and both the way he solved those issues and the conclusions he drew from his solution, helped directly lead to the modern steam engine and the modern pressure relief valve. This is a reminder that progress isn't always driven by a set plan. It's driven by change, but also good luck, along with someone who takes advantage of that good luck, of synergizing developments that may seem quite unrelated to the ultimate goal. So while you're eating that nice yummy beef you made in your Instant Pot, raise a fork to Denise Papin and celebrate his contribution to dining, oh, and steam engines.